My name is Carol Rodriguez, and I am the regional director for MEBI in the Phoenix area of Arizona. Um, and I'm here today with Jojo. Jojo, you want to tell us a little bit about your salon? Yeah. Yeah, I'm JoJo. Um, I'm the owner of the Puzzle Piece Hair Salon, and I am at Chandler in Kyrene, right off the 10 and the 202 in Chandler. Great. So we are going to give you some tips for a happy haircut today. I am a board behavior certified analyst, and JoJo is the owner and the um, salon stylist at the Puzzle Piece Hair Salon. So we want to talk first about going for your first visit before you go. So um, in the B ABA world, we call it priming. So it's just preparing your child before they go to get their hair cut. So a couple of tips for we have. One, we want to review pictures of the salon. Um, Previously, we probably would have said, you know, stop by and say hi, drop in. But with COVID, we understand that that's not always possible. Um, so if you can't just stop by, you want to find some pictures. Um, some ways to find pictures is um, going on Yelp. You can go on, on Yelp and find pictures of the salon. You could also possibly go on their uh, salon's Facebook page. Jojo, how do we find pictures of your salon? Um, that would be either on the Facebook page or on my website. Okay. And then also um, asking to FaceTime or Zoom. So that way your child can see the stylus before they even go in. Uh, Jojo, can you tell us a little bit how you do that with your first clients? Um, so I do offer an introductory Zoom or FaceTime call. And uh, that usually I would try to make it within two days of the appointment. It's really just introducing them to me. They kind of show me their toys and say hi, get to be a little bit more comfortable. Towards the end of the call, I do mention that when you come, I'm going to be playing with your hair. Um, that will, We will be taking some of that and I'm going to keep it with me. But I don't use the word cut. Oh, okay. That's, that's great. So you don't talk about the cutting of the hair. Um, you had another tip about with the combs. Yes. And then after they come, I usually can show them what one of these combs is. Now we get to show it here. And I actually went and bought a package. You can purchase these. Um, this is normally what any barber hairstylist, they're going to use something similar to this. So if you can hand that to your child at home and they can touch it to their head more so, the more that they're comfortable with anything touching their head, the better off we're going to be when they come for a haircut. Great, great. And there's also some really fun videos about um, having a positive haircut. So I know Sesame Street has one. Um, Daniel Tiger has one. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go on YouTube looking for them because you may accidentally stumble across the, the not so positive haircuts and the tantrums, those seem to be popular on YouTube. So I would do something that's a little more reputable like Sesame Street or Daniel Tiger. Um, and then also creating a social story. A social story is using pictures and talk in very short sentences that talk about the expectations of, of the event. So you could talk, you could do pictures, you could take those pictures straight from Yelp, you can save them and you don't have to create a full story. You can just download, save them and then pull them up and look at them with your child. And I would do, I would start doing that a couple of weeks prior to the, you going in for the haircut um, and just, Pictures of the different tools they might see, the pictures of the chair, if you can get a picture of the salon, picture of the comb, um, pretty much anything you think the child is going to e experience during the haircut. So we want to find how to find a friendly hairdresser and what to ask. So Jojo is in our Phoenix area. And I know that this webinar is being broadcasted and able to be viewed from all over. 
So we want to talk about a little bit about what um, you can do to make sure you find someone that's like Jojo. One thing is to ask how much time is allowed for the appointment. Jojo, how long are your appointments usually? 45 minutes is what my appointments run. On the research end I've, that I've done from other places that, that do offer something similar to what I offer, they normally do offer around 30 minutes if they say that it is a sensory friendly place. Okay. Now, if it's just a child salon, it's going to probably be a 10 to 15 minute cut. And that's not usually what's going to be best for a child that's on the spectrum. Okay. Um, do you, would they be willing to extend that some asking them if they're willing to extend that time, if they tell them, well, we allow 15 or 20 minutes for a haircut, asking them to extend, um, or even, you know, maybe even breaking it up and having maybe just a hair wash or a spray and, and comb the first time. That would be a great idea, actually. The more that the child can be familiar with the surroundings, the better off they're going to be. Great, great. And then also letting them know when you create that appointment, sharing your child's fears and past experiences is definitely a big one because now we know, are they coming in with previous trauma of being held in a chair? Um, maybe they've never had a successful haircut or maybe just that the child um, is nonverbal and can't express their wants and needs. Um, and sharing about what the child likes. How do you use that information on what the child likes, Jojo? Well, if, I mean, if a child says that their favorite color is blue, I'm wearing a blue shirt that day. I try everything. Um, but especially, yes, like, I will pick out different YouTube videos or Netflix videos to have on before they even come into the room. Make sure that I know their name, that I'm familiar with them. If they have a pet or a sister or a brother, I speak about that. But that's a form that I have my clients fill out usually prior so that I know if there's been past trauma and I know a little bit more. And I always ask about any medical conditions also. Oh, that's a great point about the medical conditions. And then also, you know, just because they're going to, uh, you're going to a salon that specializes in children's haircuts, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're specializing in children with special needs. So you want to ask them what, if they have any stylists that have this experience working with a child with special needs. And with that also asking if it's okay if the child has a break. So if they're allowing for a 30 minute haircut, um, our, the, our kiddos can't sit for 30 minutes. That's a very long, I have a hard time sitting for 30 minutes without moving. So how, how do you give them a break in a salon, Jojo? I mean, I, we just stop <laughs> <laughs> and redirect. And I kind of, we will just spray the mirror. We will have, we'll have a moment just to eat. Let's take a drink. Let's get those goldfish crackers that we know we all love and have to have and just kind of recoup and meet back in the middle to where we can get to a point of calmness before we begin again. And I find that that's so, so important. They need to feel that they have control over their body because it's, it's a scary thing that's happening pieces of their body are falling off of them onto them, which is causing a sensory issue of pain and frustration. And they've been held down or they've been hurt, cut on the ear or something to that effect. You have a stranger with sharp tools. It's a lot to take in. So I will allow them all the time that they need. And if a parent says it's going to be really difficult, I'll extend it and I'll allow for an hour and a half. Okay. Oh, wow. Sometimes, sorry. Sometimes we don't finish. <laughs> Sometimes we just, we just got to take the child at their value of where they are at that day. And that's it. And say, that's enough. And we'll come back two days later or we'll meet back in a week. 
Okay. That that's that's so wonderful how much time and, and, and that effort you put into each child, each client that you have. Um, before we move on, I wanted to just check in with Katie to see if we had any questions um, coming in. We don't have any questions yet, okay. um, but if anybody has questions, you can put them into the chat box. I am checking to see if we've got questions in there. <laughs> okay, great. So I'm moving on to during the first visit. So you had mentioned about, you know, the time link that you uh, you put it an effort you put in Jojo um, allowing time is our you know that's our first bullet point here this that is a it's a huge component to this is to allow time for the child and giving realistic expectations so if they've had past like you mentioned trauma maybe the past haircut was just a disaster um, knowing that maybe this time a realistic expectation is the child just sitting in the chair. And do they have to wear the cape and, and all of that? What do you so suggest? Like, yeah, I know we is, have bringing in an extra pair of clothes, Jojo. What does that look like? How do you do that when the child doesn't like having the hair on them and refuses to wear a cape? What do you suggest for that? Well, it does, it does make it difficult, but I do suggest, yes, bringing in a change of clothes. Um, the cape is something that needs to be worked on usually more at home than what we can do here. And I know that a lot of ABA therapists do work on it um, because it's around the neck. So a lot of that is what's going on is the constrictor of it being that way. I don't, we don't have the kind of time frame. I do bring out the cape every single time. I think it's something that it, it is beneficial for us all at the end, but it needs to be introduced. If it takes a child to 12 at the immediate when they see the cape, I say no cape is necessary. I keep a towel underneath my arm and I hand each per adult that is there with us a towel and say, if you see hair falling, wipe. If you see hair falling, wipe, and I will wipe as I go, and I clip, and I wipe, and we just try to keep the hair off of the child as best as possible. That's going to consist of some breaks involved in that also, because once it goes down the back, we got to stop. <laughs> we got to get it cleaned up and then start again. Great. And that's why you suggest also bringing a change of clothes, not to expect the child because now they're going to be in the car and you don't want them all wiggly waggly in the car because they're all itchy or having a tantrum because they're all itchy. So bringing an extra change of clothes so that way they don't ha have to sit with the hairs within their shirts or even seeing it on their clothes, seeing it on their pants. So yes. That can be just the sight of the hair falling can be a deterrent for wanting to get their hair cut. Um, so it's all about distractors. It's just really about keeping up with the distractors. I've got the dinosaurs that I will bring out and I will grab them during a haircut. I have sensory toys that I'm like, okay, you know, and I keep some in my apron pocket during so that I can pull and go and pull and go. But it is all, it's a team effort and it's all about distracting from, so that we can get to that good goal of completing. Oh, wonderful. And that actually that's on our next slide, more tips you talked about distractors and helping to keep the hair off them. Um, also, we said planning for a reward. So it doesn't have to be a huge reward. We're not saying, you know, take them to the toy store, Target, and spend another $20 on a toy. It's more, you know, let's plan for something that they really enjoy. Maybe save that their favorite movie that they watch and rewind and rewatch and rewind and watch and rewind. Maybe they get to do that a little bit afterwards. Um, or maybe it's something simple like um, a, a frosty. I know you got a Wendy's right by your <laughs> your salon, <laughs> so maybe it's a, maybe it's a frosty. They get they get to have a frosty or chicken nuggets or something. 
for afterwards, something, that, but um, trying to be creative, trying to find that one thing where you're not spending a lot of money, but you know your child really enjoys, I think is, is a great way. And then also if your child is an ABA and they're using a token system, bring the token system into the salon. They can earn those tokens and whether it's working up to a break from the haircut or working up to get access to their favorite item, you're, you're taking your ABA session from home into the salon and they're, they're earning those tokens because those tokens are so immediate and you, they see it and they're, they're earning them and they can earn them as fast or as slow as needed. Um, we talked a little bit, you and I, Jojo, about the clippers, the importance of using scissors and not going straight to the clippers. I know um, it's a big, when you have a little boy that's squirmy and doesn't like his haircut, uh, clippers seem to be the fast, easy way to go. Um, why should we rethink that, Jojo? Um, the clippers in general, are it's, it's a frightening tool. The sound alone. It's a lot. It takes off hair in big chunks. That's frightening. They, they feel like somehow it can cut them. You know, scissors is actually, it's something that they use, that they have used at school tools. It's, it's familiar. Mom's got one in the kitchen. One mom's got one in her bedroom. It's something that they see on a regular basis. We don't see these everywhere. The clippers just, it's not that way. So if we can bring them to a point of something that they've seen mom use, they've seen dad use, their teacher uses it, and they've even gotten a pair at school, then they feel a little bit more comfortable with the tools that are going to be used close to their head. And the situation where a client began with me, he had very bad experiences prior. We started out with just a scissor cut. His mom kept on a schedule, came every three weeks. And I think I've had him for about five months now. We are down to a complete zero fade. And he sits and laughs during the haircut now and gives me a big hug when he leaves and can't wait to come and see Jojo. But that was a process of us and me being completely patient and listening to him and allowing him to hold the clippers. And I actually have um, a video I should have showed you, but um, where I have a child holding the clippers himself. And I do allow the kids to hold the clippers and put them next to their head themselves so that they have that control and they can see what's going on. I also allow them to shave my arms, which like, so I have no hair on my arms, <laughs> but I allow them to feel and to see that way they can see that there's no red marks, there's no blood, there's no many times that they've had and gone and gotten a haircut and been held down. At some point they were nicked and there was blood. I'm, I mean, I saw it happen more often than not when we were trying to, you know, when I worked at a, at a salon that did seven minute haircuts on children where it, it's not feasible to not have it happen. So if they have ever had that or seen that or seen another child scream throughout that, they've still got that in their head. And we need to try to deter from that as much as possible. Right, right. And and rushing through it too, like trying to quickly go, use the clippers across their head. You know, there's they say it hurts, and we're all no, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. But when you when you do it very quickly, it does create some pain. It it it, it is very, very uncomfortable. And so that's what they're feeling. Yeah. They're feeling the direct tug of their hair just being pulled. So, right. So when we say, oh, it's not a painful haircut, it may have been. It may have been. Okay. No, that's 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 really good to learn um, because you do you kind of think, oh, let's just, you know, let's rush right through this. We can do it. But what we're doing is we are creating something that's not painful, becoming painful, and we're taking away their control by holding them down, making them sit still. We're going beyond what they can actually sit for in a, 
a regular environment and a preferred environment. They might only sit for five or 10 minutes. And now here we are going on that 15, 20, maybe even a 30 minute rough and tumbled haircut. Um, so we are creating a, a stressful environment. We are creating a little bit of, um, of dr- drama, uh, of, of trauma, um, for lack of a better, better word. So then when you go into another place or when they finally find someone like you, Jojo, I think that the child has all these past experiences and that's their learned history and they're expecting it to repeat. So going away from that, we have to shape the behavior. And with an ABA, shaping takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. If you've been trying to have your child get a haircut um, every couple of months and they are now seven, eight, 10 years old, and this is still going on, think of all that learned history it's not gonna just go away overnight because they found someone special like Jojo. It's going to take time. It's it's not just gonna turn off. Um, Carol and Jojo, we do have a question that came in. Do you have any tips with the sound of scissors cutting? Um, like noise canceling headphones, I'm sorry, noise canceling headphones block the area that they need to get to. So do you have tips with the, with, to deal with the sound of the scissors? The sound of the scissors is a tough one. Um, and normally what I do is turn the TV up. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I turn the TV up and I try to talk over it. Um, the sound of the clippers, like I, I can get through that one easier than the sound of the scissors sometimes. That sharp sound really on certain kids can really just get them right at attention and it's very hard to bring them back down. So, I mean, sometimes I will just show them on my own hair that it's okay first so that they can hear the sound there. Cause I mean, we all have a nice face frame, right? Um, so I just kind of clip into it. So then that way they can see on my own head that I would do this to myself, but it's, the sound of the scissors is a tough one. And I would suggest using it just working with scissors at home, just like with the clippers, I automatically ask kid parents, do your kids have an electric toothbrush? That's gonna be our easiest way to get to these clippers. If they can handle the electric toothbrush, they can usually handle the clippers. But the scissors, I haven't found anything that really emulates that except for scissors. Yeah, so desensitizing them. So having more experiences around the scissors, cutting paper, doing more crafts, activities that include scissors, not on their hair, (laughs) but (laughs) just so they get used to hearing the sound and also them controlling the scissors. There might be also an element of not having control. And then I have that sound right next to me as well. Um, I think between those two, my, my... my um, references and JoJo's, I think, would help the child. And desensitization t- is small baby steps over time. So um, the fr- the frequency of them being around the scissors should needs to increase for them to de- get desensitized. And then a follow up to that question: um, Do you have any suggestions on the brand of scissors to use on hair? No, not on a brand. I mean, if you're going to be cutting hair at home, you can find a good pair of at-home scissors at Sally's. I would suggest going to Sally's. Um, Don't get it off of Wish. Um, Maybe on Amazon, but but, I mean, you're going to want to spend around $45 to have something that will actually like cut through the hair. Yeah, because that, that's going to be the worst if you get a pair of scissors that doesn't cut through the hair very well because now they're yeah, it actually will multiple bend multiple times for to get that one area cut. And then Sally's, they usually have someone you can talk to, right, Jojo, yeah. at Sally's Beauty Supply? There's usually someone there you can speak to? There's usually someone there that you can speak to. And I'd say nine out of ten times, they're a licensed professional that work there. So it happens more often than not. 
Thank you. And I do have one more question for you. <laughs> um, so one parent wrote and said, my child used to let us use the clippers when he was little, but now he is six years old and won't let us use the clippers anymore. I don't know what happened. Do you have any advice um, on that? So that's where we got to start right back at the beginning. Don't force them. Don't force them to use the clippers. Start back with the scissors and then slowly ease up. And there's times that I have kids come in for an appointment, we do a scissor cut, and then I'll sit there with the clippers next to them and have them on. And we'll just watch TV, we'll be talking about stuff, we just, and then I bring them closer. And then we keep on going, and then I bring them closer. And then they'll touch them, but we have to bring them back to being desensitized to it more. Something happened, or if it's something didn't happen, their sensitivity did get stronger. So like when children come to my salon, I will touch on their head for the first five or so minutes to see where they're most sensitive. Now, 98% of the time, is it going to be right behind the ears and right on the neck? Yes. But some kids have more sensitive areas and their whole head is just it's super sensitive. So you have to kind of go about it that way, but it's really about kind of figuring it out. And I always, always bring them out. Doesn't mean that we use them, but we do establish them. And I say buy a pair for at home and, or when dad is shaving, then, you know, have them come in during that. If dad goes haircut it's always a good idea to have your son go also so that he can see daddy doesn't get hurt you know those are great tips jojo i'm also thinking too um i know that there's some apps out there where you can cut the person's hair and use the clippers and stuff on the hair. So maybe even them being playful with the app, I wouldn't, I always have a problem. Some people suggest getting a doll and having them cut or clip the doll's hair, but I'm always scared that they might accidentally get the idea of doing their own then. So I would prefer them to play with an app where in the app, um, I want to say it's a Toka Boca app where they can cut hair and they can wash it, they can blow dry it, they can shave the face, do all that kind of stuff on the app. And it's and you hear the sounds, you can hear the clipping sounds, you can hear the buzzer sounds of the clippers, the sounds of the scissors, the hair dryer, the water, the, you can hear all of that. So I would actually turn the volume up on the app so that way it's a little bit more realistic or even a little bit more than what reality is. So that way they start to get desensitized and hopefully get back to having their hair done with the clippers. Cause I do know for it's kind of an easy, fast way to get that done <laughs> as long as they're still and it can be done the right way. It is much faster. It's a cleaner look. Um, it's easier to get back into the parts where, you know, most kids don't want to be touched. And those clippers just kind of swing right around. But you are totally correct on that app. My two-year-old is on it on it more often than she should be. Let's, let's, just, <laughs> let's be honest. But she thinks she's a hairstylist. And yes, and I listened to the sounds the other day, and it is extremely similar. Yeah. That toga toga. And one of the barriers that we haven't touched on yet is um, a child that doesn't sit still. You got the, 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 the wiggles. I know sometimes we can have them if they're more comfortable sitting on mom or dad's lap. We can kind of work around that a little bit. Any other suggestions for the children that the child that doesn't like to sit still? Um, so that's when we want to use a timer. We want to have the reward in place. We're going to we're going to do four minutes worth of work. Then you receive a sticky hand or you get your lollipop, then we're gonna do four minutes more worth of work, and then we'll do something else, or you have your coin or, or something like that. And that's usually what's gonna be best. Or, I mean, do I cut hair on the floor? Do I cut hair while they're standing up? Do I cut hair while they're sitting on a bench and I'm sitting behind them? I do that. Um, I've cut hair in a backyard where a kid was spraying me with the hose though. I mean, <laughs> so I, I really try to find them where they're at 
ideally we need them kind of to stay still for just safety reasons. You know, my place is small, so that makes it nice. But if they're a runner, like, and you're in a bigger salon, that is going to be a problem. And I would suggest doing the, the hug and hold in the parent's lap. Okay. And any, uh, so we don't want to, ho- we want to emphasize that we don't want to hold them still. Like we are holding their head still. You're, it's that tight bit mama bear, papa bear hug that we're doing. We're not wrestling with them. Um, and if they, they might just need to get down for a couple minutes. They might need to get those wiggles out. Um, and we also, if they don't have great communication skills, is there some, them wiggling around might mean they're communicating that there's another need that needs to be met. So maybe they see something they want to go look at or touch. Maybe they need to get their wiggles out. Um, Maybe it's their way of saying they're not liking what's going on and we need to take a step back for a second. Exactly. And sometimes you just have to do some wiggle time. You just got to take a break and get out those wiggles and have some fun with it. And just not, I just put the tools away during that time. So they're not present. They don't see them. We're just taking a moment and coming back. And then we can go back to the work at hand. But right now we are in wiggle time. And that doesn't mean that we have to look at scissors or talk about shears or talk about clippers. or Even talk about the reward. We can just talk about this break and being away from it. Yeah, that's great. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning, preparing for the visit, making sure we are, you know, we're bringing some of their favorite things. We are, if, if we're going to do a reward, we're setting that up um, appropriately. If we're using tokens, making sure we're bringing it that we're prepared um, for that child, the, you know, mom and dad, you know, they know the child the best. They're going to know what he likes, what he doesn't like. Um, I always love hearing the success, sto- success stories um, of not having the expectation, like they'll never get their hair cut. Uh, they've never sat still. Then It's never gone well. And then when we set them up for success by priming them, we are we come to the salon prepared. We've maybe have had pictures or we've had FaceTime with the, the stylist. So that's not the stranger that we're get, go, walking into for the first time, that all that is m- making that step forward to those success stories. Is there anything else, Jojo, that you want to add to that? I mean, I say a lot of it at my salon, progress, not perfection. <clears throat> Don't come in with an idea that we're going to be able to do that really cute hairstyle the first time with the sharp line and zero fade. And <clears throat> Excuse me. I always say when the kid, when your child comes to me, when they walk in the door, that's one. <laughs> That, that's one down. If they acknowledge the chair, that's two. If, if we get to the cape, that's three. If we have a comb in their hand, we've got to take all those little victories and own them for what they are because it's not an easy thing. So the more that we can look at the victories and not the negatives, the better off we're going to be all in all. And it's going to be a more pleasant experience for the parents is I find more often than not that the parents have been stared at, they have been pointed at, they have been made to feel as if there's something wrong because their child can't sit for a haircut. So when they come in, their anxiety level is already high also. So the more that we can just, it's going to be okay, we're going to get through it. Because we can, because he he came in, he met Jojo, he sat in the chair, we got scissors out, he held the clippers, all of it is victories. And if we can look at it that way, I think it's just going to be so much easier to actually complete a happy haircut. That's awesome. Thanks, Jojo. So um, that concludes our our tips and, and 
Do we have any other questions, Katie? Um, you know, we've had some other comments come in. So um, one one person suggested that if their kids are having a hard time sitting still, that, you know, like you said, the more breaks and playtime helps and also maybe bringing their favorite toy with them. Um, so if you can bring a favorite toy from home, that might help their um, child. Um, and then one person suggested also a, a sound conditioner, which I'm wondering if that's maybe like a white noise machine. Um, maybe something to else to help with the sound. Oh, so, that's great. Uh, uh, yeah, white noise machine. If there's, no, if there's no TV or anything like that available. Yeah. For uh, sure. I mean, there's usually a phone or something, but yes, that favorite toy or that blanket or even grandpa, I mean, whoever it is or whatever it is, that can bring your child to a point of calmness, bring that, <laughs> bring that. It would be, I mean, I'd be happy to have it. Whatever we can do. I know we all just want to be able to accomplish this goal of getting that haircut and, you know, being able to have our kid look so cute in those pictures. It, it, and it will happen. It's just going to take some time and a little dedication and commitment from everyone. Yeah, I think that's really good advice um, as a parent myself to set your expectations and maybe reset those expectations. <laughs> I think that's really good advice. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, because sometimes, oh, go ahead. sometimes it's just not their day. We could, we could have three haircuts in a row where everything went perfect. And then Carol, you and I spoke about this before, but there's outside factors that like, okay, so you had that appointment scheduled at three o'clock. Well, there was something bad happened at school or on the ride home or on the ride here, got in the fight with sister, something like that. There can be other factors that yes. So when they come here, and we're already at an anxiety level, even though mom and dad are like, well, the last three times were perfect. Yeah, but something else happened. And so sometimes like I suggest maybe we don't do it today. You know, maybe we can't meet him in his space today. Maybe we try tomorrow. Maybe we try another day. But other times it just takes that extra 15 minutes at the beginning where we just kind of find out where is Timmy or whatever, you know, that we need to meet him in his space. Yes, ex exactly, Jojo. Yeah, the, the setting events can definitely bring down the best person on their best day, have something go wrong, and the next event is, is not going to go so well. Um, so, so that's always something to, to think of, you know, what happened during the day. And if they're tantruming in the car on the ride over, that tantrum is going to carry on into the salon. And I've had parents that say to me, like, it, today is not it. Like, they will text and be like, this is not going to happen, JoJo. And I'm like, that is okay. Just get back to me and we will reestablish it. I don't ever want to take a child and force that to be done. And especially if we've already established, like, this great relationship, we, we don't want to step back 10 feet. We just don't. Thanks, well, Jojo. We have a lot of people saying thank you. Lots of great useful tips that you've provided tonight. So we have several people saying thank you very much. And it looks like that um, the advice that you've given has been very helpful to families. Oh, thank you so much. That's great. I'm so That makes me feel good. good. I'm happy. <laughs> And um, we'll let anybody else who has uh, questions or comments, you can enter them into the chat box now. Um, as I mentioned, this is being recorded. I will save the recording and post it onto the MEB website. Um, it'll get posted online tomorrow. And then I'll send a follow-up email to everybody with the link to the recording as well. So you can uh, watch it again, You know, share it with anybody else you may think that would benefit from this information. We would love uh, for you to do that. And always feel free to get back in touch with us if you have other questions as well. Um, Jojo, do you have contact information that you could share? That was one of the questions. I sure do. You can always um, 
get in touch with me through the website at www.thepuzzlepiecehairsalon.com or you can find me at the Puzzle Piece Hair Salon on Facebook or my phone number at 480-242-8080. All right. And even if you're not in Arizona, if you just have any questions or concerns or want me to speak to your hairstylist, reach out to me and I wouldn't have a problem doing so. Great, and I'm going to share your contact information in the chat box here, and then I will um, send that in the follow-up to everybody as well so that everybody can have your website and Facebook and your um, phone number as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think that was the last question here. Um, so I think we'll get ready to sign off. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us this evening. Um, look for that follow-up in your inbox tomorrow. And thank you to Carol and Jojo for providing all of this great advice to everybody tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, thank Jojo. You. Thank you.